Important note, the content of this tutorial is for educational purposes only. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this occasion we are going to watch how we can do a geospatial analysis using vectorial layers. In this table you can see the layers of information we are going to use to do this tutorial, the source information and also the website where you can download all these files. The layers are going to be the superficial sand and gravel deposits of Alberta, abandoned wells in Alberta related with the oil and gas, hydrology of Alberta 50k, municipal boundaries of Alberta and Alberta water wells. Also the source of information as you can see here is Alberta Energy Regulator, Government of Alberta, Altalis and RGIS online. For this last layer, this one, I couldn't find any website where we can download the shape file for the groundwater wells in Alberta. Then I decided to use the RGIS online because here we can use the RGIS feature server layers to add information to our GIS desktop. However, you can check the information through this website, Alberta Water Walls, Government of Alberta, to look for any other kind of information related with this layer. In order to do the geospatial analysis, we are going to compile the information between these four layers and we are going to create a new layer of information. This layer is going to be the potential surface water bodies risk associated with abandoned walls. Why we are going to use these four layers? Well, first of all, we are going to use the municipal boundaries because we are going to work just in a specific municipality and we need to know what is the shape of that municipality, what is the borders, the limits, right? Then we are going to use the abandoned wells because we need to know what is the location of that wells associated with the oil and gas activity. That are going to be the potential source of contamination. Then we need the hydrology layer because we are going to make a spatial analysis related with the risk associated with surface water bodies. Then we need this layer where we are going to see rivers, lakes, any kind of superficial water. Then we are going to use the superficial sand and gravel deposits because this kind of deposit is where the contaminant is going to migrate faster from the unsaturated zone to the saturated zone. At the end, we are going to add a shape file ready with the groundwater walls. Then we are going to see if the areas uh, designated as a potential high risk for contamination, they have any groundwater well close to them. Now I'm going to show you a diagram where we are going to see a model related with the superficial sand and gravel deposits and why it's very important to have this layer in our geospatial analysis. In this diagram we have a plan view represented by this square where we can see a surface water body in this case is a river but could be any other kind of surface water body and also we have a site and we have a section is this line and uh, the section is represented with this draw here then we have two different kind of X scenarios. One it's represented by sand and gravel and the other one it's represented by clay and seal. We have an saturated zone also known as a Badoz zone and also we have a saturated zone known also as aquifer. Now let's go to see why I decided to use the layer of superficial sand and gravel to create our geospatial analysis. Let's go to suppose that we have an impacted site and this one here is the contaminated area, okay? Then the contaminant is going to move following the gravity 
then it's going to move vertically. Then how the contaminant in this area can impact the river. We need a transport mechanism. In this case, our transport mechanism is going to be the groundwater flow direction. Let's go to suppose the contaminant is going to impact the aquifer. Then, depending of the contaminant, could be happen different things, right? The contaminant can be floating at the groundwater table, can be dissolved, and also can sink and stay at the bottom of the aquifer. That is going to depend of the kind of contaminant. But for the one is dissolved in groundwater, this one is going to travel very, very long distances. It's going to be uh, different for this one and for this one, okay? But for the one it's dissolved, that can travel very long distance. Then that's the way the contaminant from here is going to move to the river. In this X scenario, we have to suppose that we have the contour lines here. And here we have the maximum value for the groundwater elevation. And here we have the minimum value. Then the groundwater flow direction is moving according to these black lines, okay? from the side to the river. In this second scenario where we have clay unsealed, it's going to happen the same. However, here, because of the texture characteristics of the clay unsealed, maybe the contaminant is not going to reach the aquifer because some of the contaminant can be trapped at the porosity of the clay unsealed or if this one impact the aquifer it is going to take a long time to travel the contaminant from the contaminated area to the aquifer because of the effective porosity in this kind of sediment it's much less than in sand and gravel then we have to suppose that when we have sand and gravel the risk of the contamination of the aquifer is higher than if we have clay unsealed. That is the reason because I took this uh, superficial uh, sand and gravel in Alberta because this kind of deposit is very sensitive for the contaminants. This model is a very simple one where I try to explain in a very easy way what could be the behavior of the contaminant and what could be the relation between the badose zone and the saturated zone, right? However, you have to think that the unsaturated zone could be very complex where we have different layers of sediments, layers with high hydraulic conductivity and other layers with low hydraulic conductivity. Even the transport of the contaminant is going to depend how thick is the unsaturated zone. There are a lot of parameters, a lot of things involved in this kind of X scenarios for the contamination. Now let's go to see how we are going to work with our geospatial analysis. In our geospatial analysis, we are going to recognize the next uh, features. First of all, the surface water bodies. Also, the wells associated with oil and gas. This kind of wells could be an exploration well, a production well, an injection well, any kind of activity related with the oil and gas. Also, we are going to see the superficial uh, layers of gravel and sand. And at the end, we are going to add the groundwater walls. For the surface water bodies, we are going to make a buffer of 100 meters, 200 meters and 300 meters. And for the wells related with oil and gas, we are going to make a buffer of 90 meters. I decided to make this buffer of 90 meters because the oil and gas used to have a surface around 100 by 100 meters 
or even a little bit more and i believe with 90 meters of radius we can cover all these kind of areas even a little bit bigger then the software is going to show us the intersection between the oil and gas areas the buffers and the sand and gravel deposits and we are going to see these colors then red is going to be for a very high risk because we are very close to the river orange is going to be high risk and lila is going to be medium risk for the rest is going to be low risk then we have to see if we have groundwater wells next to our area with a high potential of risk because the groundwater wells are going to provide us the information that we have groundwater in our site. Then this one is going to be the first step before to go to the field. We have to be aware that we get all this information, all this data totally free. Then when we know what is the areas with a risk, we can program the field job and make an extension investigation of these areas of potential high risk for the surface water bodies. Okay, let's go to work on the quantum GIS. First, let's go to download the files. The first website is this one. And here we are going to get the superficial sand and gravel deposits of Alvera. Just click here. Open. Cut. We are going to save here. Paste. Now let's go to the next one. The next one is going to be abandoned walls in Alvera. And this one is the website. And we have to select this one here. file here cut the next one is going to be the hydrology that it's in geogratis website from the government of Canada English go here Choporama then we want this one and it's going to be vector data here we want the lakes rivers okay this one then we want the shape file this option here and we are going to select the 50k for alberta this one here 50k alberta okay In this case, I decided to took the 50k because it's a it's the smaller scale. As you can see here, the next one is 250k, and then 1 million, 5 million, and 15 million. In this case, the 50k maybe is going to provide us the information related with these small creeks. Okay that they are sometimes even quite ephemeral and they only have water at the rain season right but we want to capture all these kind of features that's the reason because i took the smaller scale now let's go to move to the next one the next one is going to be the municipal boundaries and we are going to get that one in Altalis. To use this website you have to register. Just put a name, email and password 
and then you are going to be able to download some information. Some things are for free and other things have to be paid. Okay, in this case we want this one, municipal boundaries. Add item and then you have to order, you know, fill all these fields and they, they are going to send you a link where you can download the information. I did already and I have the folder here. Um, for the last one, that is going to be Alberta Water Wells. We did, I didn't find any website to download this information and I use uh, RGIS online to get that layer. I'm going to show you during the video how you can get this layer, okay? Let's go to open Quantum GIS and let's go to extract all the information here in this folder. Okay, now let's go to open the files with Quantum GIS. Okay, new project and I'm going to open the vectorial layers. The first we are going to open is this one. I'm not going to be worried about the coordinate reference systems. The file we are going to open is the rural. And here, as you can see, we have the municipalities of Alberta. Then if you go here, properties, then go labels, show labels, and select the name and we are going to put a buffer to see better apply and okay then for our job we are going to work in this municipality Cam Rose okay then the next layer is going to be this one we are going to add a couple of them. One is going to be this one. Okay, that's uh, the rivers, but uh, this kind of file, it's for a lines. And we have to add this one, water bodies, because that one, it's a polygon. and we need both of them. Then let's go to add a new one. In this case, it's going to be the gravel and sand. Open. This one has a lot of information, also these ones. But for the gravel and sand, you can see this green color here okay and here at our municipality cam rose we don't have too much but we have enough okay to do our analysis then let's go to add one more layer that is going to be this one the walls associated with oil and gas That, that layer, it's crazy. We have a lot of walls. I'm going to take this one out. You see that one? That's crazy. Still loading. Okay. And also we can add the last one, but we are not going to use at the moment. That is this layer. Now let's go to extract the municipality we need from the rural file. Let's go to select can rows. This one. If you open the attribute table. Okay. Let me see what happened here. If you open the attribute table, 
you are going to see it's also selected. Then click right on Rural, Save As. We are going to create a new folder that we are going to put this name, Cat. Another name, Cat. Okay. Select this folder, and that one is going to be Can Rose. Save. It is very important to see here the referent, the coordinate reference distance is not 83. We are going to leave this one at the moment, but later we are going to change. Okay. Then click on this box to make sure you are uh, going to save only the selected features. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Then we can remove this one. And now we are going to use this uh, shape to cut all these folders, all these files. Okay. I'm going to show you. Then go, for example, here vector, geoprocessing tools, clip. Then here we have to put the water course. And we're going to use this shape to cut this layer. Let's go to save in here in cuts that is going to be water course cut save and run the process okay as you can see now this one can be eliminated remove and we cut the reverse just for this shape okay also we can put a name here right name is what it is going to be water course and now then i'm going to do the same for this one for this one and for this one but i'm going to pass the video faster not for this one because this one has a different coordinate systems for example if you see here this one has not 83, okay? But this one has uh, already UTM coordinates, okay? Okay, now we have all the, the files cut according to this shape okay except this one that has to be at the same if we want to cut this this uh, file with this shape both of them has to be at the same uh, coordinate systems and they have different ones now we are going to do it's pass all these files to the UTM coordinate systems okay and also I'm going to pass the video faster to do this job but no for the first for this one okay let's save us we are going to create a new folder now that is going to be Darun Darun 84 UTM zone 12 north folder copy my name okay and that one is going to be cam rose safe here you have to make sure you select this kind of coordinate systems 32612 WGS 84 UTM zone 12 north okay we have to do that one because for the buffers we have to work with UTM coordinates then we can use meters but if we are using a geographic uh, coordinate systems 
like NAT83, we cannot use meters, okay? Because we are working with latitude and longitude. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same for all these files, okay? But I'm going to pass the video faster. We can remove this one, remove. And I'm going to do the same for all these ones. Okay, now we have all the f the files in UTM coordinates, as you can see here. Okay, UTM zone 12 north for this one. UTM zone 12 north. That it's very important. All the files has to be with the same coordinate systems. Okay. UTM zone nine. 12 north, this one, UTN zone 12 north, this one, UTN zone 12 north, and this one also, UTN zone 12 north. Now we are ready to cut this one because this one has the same coordinate systems to show you UTM on 12 north okay but we didn't cut that one yet then we are going to cut that one just vector click processing tools clip here has to be this one and we are going to save directly in this folder that's going to be groundwater wells. Run. Okay, we can eliminate this one. Remove. And I'll save that one as a groundwater wells. Okay, going to keep the same kind of format. Done. Now we are going to close this uh, project and we are going to open a new one where we are going to set up the coordinate reference systems as a WGS84 UTN SOM 12 North. New project, project properties, and we are going to select this one. Apply, okay, and here we have the same. Okay, now we are ready to load all our layers in that kind of coordinates. So it's going to be all of these ones. Okay. Now we are ready to do the buffer analysis. Okay. Let's go to see how this uh, layer looks like. We have in UTM coordinates, as you can see here, because we defined at the beginning. And for the rivers. We have this kind of uh, file for the water bodies. We have this one. For the sand and gravel, we have this layer. For the wells related uh, with oil and gas, we have this file. And the uh, for the groundwater walls, we have this one. Okay, let's go to make the buffers. First, let's go to create the buffer for our water course. Is this layer, then go vector, 
geoprocessing tools and here fix distance buffer select the layer you want to do the buffer is going to be water course and here you have to put the distance in meters the first buffer is going to be 100 meters for the segments you can leave that one like this then let's go to save that one in a new folder that we are going to call buffers save here and that one is going to be water course buffers save and run and that's our layer Okay, you can see the river here and the buffer is one meter, 100 meters of distance for each side, okay? As you can see, 100 meters, uh, 100 meters, close. Now let's go to do the same for the, well, let's go to specify here, rename, water course, buffer okay let's go to close this one and let's go to do the same for uh water bodies hundred meters segment is okay save Save and run. We have to move this one here. Click here. Okay. The green one is the buffer for the water bodies, and the lila is the buffer for the rivers okay now we have to make a join between these two buffers we didn't did before we didn't make a join of the water course and body water bodies because it was a different geometry the water course it was a line and the water bodies was a polygon but now for the buffer both of them are polygons and then we can make a union because in that way it's going to be easy then do the buffer for 200 and 300 meters let's go to do the union to do that one just vector geoprocessing tools and here union then select the buffers you want to make the connection is going to be buffer and this one this one water course buffer and this one buffer and save as is going to be hydro buffer hydro buffer 100 meters save and run now we have a uh, now we have a buffer for the hydrology then we can remove the other buffers this one and this one and we are going to put this one here okay let's go to change the name here rename that one is going to be hydro buffer 100 meters now we are going to use the sand and gravel shape to cut the 100 hydro buffer because the information we need 
is just inside the gravel and sand. Okay, let's go to do it. Your processing tools, clip. This one has to be hydro buffer. And here we want the sand and gravel. Save. Let's go to create a new folder. And we are going to use this name for this folder. Cut. Rename. Hydro, because we are going to have the hydrology. Gravel and sand, because it's the layer. And buffers, because it's the hydro buffers. Okay, perfect. That one is going to be the 100 buffer and run. Okay, let's see how it looks like the layer. Let's go to change the color because this one is going to be red color because that one is the 100 meters of distance from from the water bodies and rivers okay as you can see here this this one has the shape of the sand and gravel okay this buffer now let's go to use this buffer to do the 200 and 300 but first let's go to change the name for this one rename okay now vector Processing tools clip. Oh, sorry, we are want to do the buffer vector geoprocessing tools, fixed distance buffer. That one is okay because it's this one, and we have to add here 100. And let's go to put just one segment, and we are going to save in this folder, and it's going to be 200. Now we want to check everything is okay in a few points to make sure the buffer is correct. Okay, looks very good. And let's go to change the name here. This one is going to be 200 buffer. And let's go to change the color for an orange one. Okay, now let's go to do the 300 buffer. The problem here is that our layer, as you can see here, is outside. The buffer is outside of the sun. Then we have to cut that layer. Let's go to cut. Vector, geoprocessing, clip. And I want to cut the 200 buffer with the sun and gravel. And I'm going to create a temporary file. Clip, I'm going to remove this one. And this one has to be here. And as you can see now, now it's perfect. We are inside the gravel and sand. Let's go to change the color. And also rename this one as a 200 buffer. And the color is going to be orange. This kind of orange to have uh, some contrast with the colors. And now let's go to do the 300. But first let's go to save this one. Save as. We are going to use the same name as uh, here for the 200. Save. The coordinate systems is good okay yeah i want to overwrite the file okay R uh, remove this one no that one remove this one and this one is the one we created now and it has to be orange Okay, 
I have to be very focused because it's very easy to make a, a mess with the files and everything because there are a lot of files to work on and looks good okay now let's go to create the 300 buffer I'm going to use this one vector raster vector geoprocessing tools fix distance buffer I'm going to use the 100 and I'm going to add 200 one segment and I'm going to create a temporary file okay this one is the 300 let's see we have to cut again with the sand and gravel layer because there are some areas where the buffer is outside and we want to work just with the gravel and sand layer okay let's go to cut then vector geoprocessing tools clip here we want buffer this one and here we want the gravel and sand and we are going to save the file here as a 300 buffer save and run this one we can eliminate this one remove and this one goes to the bottom here and is going to be the 300 and that one is going to be green color something like that okay apply check some points to see everything is good okay looks good okay now let's go to do the buffers for the oil and gas wells vector geoprocessing tools fix distance buffer here has to be wells oil and gas and the buffer as i said at the beginning of the video is going to be a rad radius of 90 meters then the diameter is going to be 180 and with that distance we can cover all the areas 100 by 100 or 120 by 120 even a little bit bigger save and we can save here oil and gas buffer let's go to put the radio at the beginning okay save and run let's go to check everything is good uh, is this buffer want this one on the top okay I'm going to change something because I don't like this one I like something more round Sixty, okay, I'm going to change this one. Remove. Same process, geoprocessing tools, fix distance buffer. Walls of oil and gas, 90 meters. And we are going to leave now the segments, five segments, okay? We are going to save here in this one, save, yes, and run. Okay, I prefer this one. This one goes here. And let's go to change the name. That is going to be 90 and it's going to be buffer and now we want the intersection between these areas with the buffers inside the sand and gravel okay then if we move this one here we are going to see the walls uh, this one out okay as you can see all these walls that are inside the sand and gravel now we are going to see what is the 
the buffer index section okay first let's go to do with 100 then again geoprocessing tools clip here I want the buffer 100 and here I want the 90 here save as and we are going to create a folder that we are going to call this one areas of areas risk for the first is going to be very high risk because that one is going to be the buffer 100 okay let's go to see the result let's go to take all the layers first okay this one is the result and this all, all these areas has a risk a very high risk okay because they are very close to the river maximum 100 meters and we have uh, sand and gravel in these areas okay as you can see here this one is the sand and gravel okay and if we put the 100 buffer we are going to see all the green selectives is because it's inside this buffer okay that is indicating that we have a field here for example in this case let's go to move this one here in this case we have an oil and gas well here or related with the activity oil and gas and this one is very close to a water body maybe river or just a water body as you can see here the water body okay now let's go to do the same for the for the 200 and 300 but I'm going to pass the video faster this one has to be in very high risk what is this one we have to rename this one with first change the color for a red one okay apply and okay and this one is going to be very high risk rename and now I'm going to do the the next ones faster okay this is the 200 I'm going to change the name here rename for high risk and the color is going to be orange this orange is going to be good apply and that one has to be here Okay, and let's go to see how it looks like. Let's go to take these guns out. Okay, now we have the areas where we have high risk and very high risk for the red one and high risk for the orange one. Now let's go to do the 300. okay that is complete let's go to move here change the name medium risk and let's go to change the color that one is going to be a kind of green this one for example apply and we are done now let's go to talk a little bit about the limitations of this geospatial analysis 
First, I would like to move this layer here to the bottom to see the sand and gravel and also I'm going to change the color for the water bodies for a blue one something like that, that's okay and also I want to see the water, water course okay. first of all the the analysis I did is only just for the gravel and sand it doesn't mean let me show you the walls related with oil and gas and also the buffers okay every one of these ones is a oil and gas field okay it doesn't mean that outside of the sand and gravel area we don't have risk we don't know that one you know as you can see this oil and gas field is very close to the river also this one right but we didn't analyze that risk we analyze only for the gravel and sand that it's a very important point also we can say that this uh, geospatial analysis it's quite simple right because i did just in a, in one hour to compile all the information and we use just three different kind of parameters right for example the presence of gravel and sand the distance between the surface water bodies and the oil and gas fields according to three buffered distance 100 200 and 300 and also the the presence of groundwater walls that we are going to see now for this one I'm going to activate this one but i'm going to change the to this one apply as you can see in in our area for the oil uh, for the gravel and sand there are a lot of groundwater walls and that one is going to indicate me that here we have groundwater okay as you can see here for example there are a lot of groundwater walls and that it's an evidence that we have groundwater in this area I remember I said at the beginning of the video I'm going to show you how you can get this layer for the groundwater walls but the video is already really long and I'm going to show you in my YouTube video channel uh, where you can get a video to see how you can get this layer this is my YouTube video channel and this is the name GeoRGB and if you go to lesson 8 where you are going to learn how to use the web map server WMS and also you are going to learn how to use the RGIS feature server layer to add layers of information as a shape file then we was talking about the limitations if if you want a more accurate uh, geospatial analysis you, you need more data right and then you have to spend more time and more money for example in this case you know you can filter the kind of well we have at the oil and gas field right because we can have different kind of wells for example a well injection a produce well an exploration well and every one of these ones is going to have a different severity in terms of contamination also for example for the superficial sand and gravel if we go here to the attribute table we have different kind of deposit here we have sand and silt but here we have sand silt and clay and mineral gravel then every kind of deposit is going to have a different vertical hydraulic conductivity right then for example even we don't know how thick is the the unsaturated zone because if the unsaturated zone it's very thick you know we have a lot of meters of unsaturated zone the contaminant is going to take more time to travel all this area or maybe we have an, a layer of clay you know and that one is going to act 
as a barrel and it's not going to allow to migrate the contaminant to the aquifer. There are a lot of a lot of parameters that we need to analyze, but in this case we use just a few parameters and it took us just one hour analyze all this information, right? But if you want to do that one by hand, that one is going to take days. But we did very fast with the software and that's really good. If I have to analyze this area, I'm going to start for, for oil and gas fields. They are on the sand and gravel because as I said before, that is going to be the more sensitive areas for the contaminant to migrate to the aquifer. And then we don't know even, for example, here in, in this area, we have these groundwater wells here, but maybe the groundwater is not moving to the river. Is moving in an opposite direction then if we have a contamination here it's not going to impact the river then we have to assume that our geospatial analysis it's quite relative in terms of risk because it's based in our parameters but as i said there are a lot of parameters to consider and when you take all these parameters and you make a different analysis, the risk is going to be different. That it's uh, a point to consider. Okay, guys, and thank you very much for watching the video and see you on next video.